For decades, Ash Ketchum was synonymous with the Pokemon anime, but he failed to beat the Pokemon League in basically every single region. So I've started this video series where I play through each of those regions as Ash using the same Pokemon he did for every major battle to see if he could have done better. In addition to that, there are a few other rules, but I'll explain them as we go. Let's see if Ash could have become the Hoenn champion. Ash gets this show on the road by hitching a ride to Hoenn in some dude's moving truck. Once again, I have zero badges, but I copied Ash's wonderful Hoenn style. By the way, there are plenty of other changes I've made to this game, so if you want to see what they all are, stick around till the end. This lady claims to be my mom and invites me into my new home, which is creepy because my real mom is back in Kanto hanging out with Mimi. I'm getting some strong Stranger Danger vibes here. Good thing I have my trusty lightball Pikachu to protect me. Having been through Kanto and Johto, check out those videos if you haven't already, Ash knows that any Pokeballs just lying around are fair game. Except for this one, I suppose. In Retribution, I then wreck May's bike. Once is an accident, but twice? Well, that's a habit. My gorgeous bike. This is all that Pikachu's fault. I've got a bone to pick with them. Birch offers me a new starter. Trico. Trico! So is it a water type? No, Ash, it's a grass type. Cool. And I choose the iconic water type Pokemon, Trico. Ash technically catches one a little bit later in the Petalburg Woods, but why not get one early? May wants to try out our new Pokemon, but the joke's on her because my very experienced Pikachu, who is back to mm -hmm. level 5 somehow, easily defeats her Torchic. Before I can get to Old Dale to register for another Pokemon League, Stranger Lady gives me some running shoes and hints that she knows who my father is. Well, that makes one of us. There are rumors going around that my father is the gym leader in Petalburg. So let's check it out. Today he heads to Petalburg City, home of the first gym. This is the moment I've been waiting for my entire life. We are finally going to meet Ash's dad, and you're not my father. What kind of sick joke is this? Norman is May's dad. Talk about getting my hopes up for nothing. I help Wally catch a Pokemon, but he's not actually in the anime, besides a tiny cameo in the Pokemon Masters trailer, so let's just forget about him, shall we? Even though I don't have enough Pokemon to truly challenge my fake father, we do have a practice round where his Vigoroth quickly kills my Pikachu. Well, there's no place like Hoenn to lose a Pikachu. It's a good thing this is not a Nuzlocke, so instead of losing a team member, we gain one in the form of some know-it-all kid. And then Brock abandons his family, once again, to follow me like a lost puppy. Then, I do get a new Pokemon, Talo. Now this guy has guts, which is an awesome ability. But I could never Talo properly in my younger days, because I didn't understand how great it actually was. I make my way through this crowd of trees, pecking a ton of worms in the process, and meet up with Team Aqua for the first time. In the anime, this happens after the Roxanne battle, but that doesn't stop Talo from pecking this dog to death. For the Roxanne battle, Ash uses Pikachu and Trico. Seems easy enough, right? Except, his Trico doesn't know any grass moves. So yeah. Still, all things are bright and beautifly because I secretly taught Pikachu to master Iron Tail. Couple that with Light Ball, that I changed to also double his attack in this game, like it does in future generations, and the battle goes as well as it could. Even with only 75% accuracy, Iron Tail doesn't miss, and Pikachu is the winner by a nose pass crit. Well, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Good job actually thinking ahead for once, Ash. And you'd better think ahead by subscribing to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on awesome future videos like this one. And if you like the Ash series I've been doing, leave a like, comment, and share it on social media. That would be awesome, and it's a great way to spread the nostalgia. I stop an Aqua member from preying on some innocent Wingle and make my way up the stairway to Devon unopposed, meeting up with President Stone. There's a feeling he gets when he looks to the west, and we call that feeling embarrassment, because that is where his rebellious adult son, Stephen, lives like a hobo in a cave. I'd be embarrassed too. Then, it's time to brave the ways on Mr. Briny's tiny boat after a very uneventful rival battle. Once I get to Duford Town, I look for Stephen, who dug a huge hole and went through a lot of trouble for a single Firestone. A Firestone, what I've been searching for for so long. Is that it? These things are everywhere in Kanto. All you need is some money. After going core fishing, it's time for a Metatite fight. 
Now this is actually a rematch battle, since Ash technically already lost to Brawly a few episodes ago. The victor of this match is Brawly! Corfish makes short work of his Machop, even after a heal. But then out comes a Hariyama, because in his first attempt, Brawly's Makuhita evolved mid-battle. So, a single vital throw, and Corfish is a goner. That was not even close. Per the rules, when a Pokemon dies in a battle like this, I have to restart the match. This time, I leave with Trico, with the intention of flashing Machop as much as possible, and hoping that Corfish can harden enough times to survive the Hariyama. But it never even gets close to working. After 11 attempts or so, I can tell this just isn't gonna happen. But I do have a trick up my sleeve in the form of Talo. Ash did use him in the first Brawly battle, so, since my other guys simply can't do it, let's see if the bird can brave the wave. He comes in pre-poisoned, obviously, and wing attacks the Machop. Hariyama comes out, and is also wung attacked. So, yeah, that was a lot easier. I feel a bit bad, because Ash didn't win with Talo on his team, but at the same time, if Ash had won in the first place with this bird, we wouldn't be in this mess. I didn't see any legit way I could win with a grassless Trico and Corfish, so I think this is fine. In Slateport, I meet up with Archie, who is in a grand total of two Pokemon episodes. So he's not all that important. What is important is a Pokeblock party they're trying to have in the Trick Room. Whoever wins gets a lifetime supply of them, and I know where to find the door. Ash fails to win, just like everything else in his life, so I head back to the Slateport Contest Hall to make my own Pokeblocks. Except, these are not Contest Halls in Emerald. They're actually Battle Tents, so I can't even do that but I can defeat Mei on Route 110. Pikachu one-shots her Wingle, but is crit by the Lombre and almost dies. I pivot to Trico for a hit, then to Taylo who finishes the battle with just a couple of wing attacks. This bird is actually really strong. Blocking the entrance to the Mawile Gym is nobody, because Wally doesn't exist. Pikachu decides to trade Watts with Watson to try this battle all on his own. I start by using an X special, I'll explain why in a second, and after getting rolled on, Voltorb falls in one Thunderbolt, as does the Magnemite who replaces him. Magneton starts by paralyzing me, like a jerk, so Pika responds in kind. After a few turns of messing around, Pikachu finally takes out the triple magnet. And Watson, understandably, is pretty upset. It turns out that Ash's Pikachu got an electric boost earlier in the episode by iron tailing a mechanical Raikou, which is why I was allowed to use an item here. But don't get used to it, this is the only time. Ash tries to give the badge back, because he basically cheated, but Watson declines. He just wants me to leave already, which I can understand. But before I can, Trico needs to learn how to spit. That's it. Meaning he can now use grass moves. But he's still a Trico, so he's not that great. What you seed is what you get. Maybe one day he'll evolve, but come what may. Speaking of, in Fall Arbor Town, May finally wins her first contest, but again, this place is a battle tent, so it doesn't really apply. Team Aqua and Magma have a fight for a meteorite, where Archie shows up again. Little do they know, I too want that useless space rock. But I need to beat up Maxi to get it, which is easier done than said. Pikachu one-shots his first two Pokemon, and Corfish his last. Not sure what's so great about this one rock, but I guess I'll take it, and cast it into the fire to destroy its evil. For Flannery, I'm going to start with Corfish, even though I don't think he's strong enough to do this one. After a Bubble Beam each, the Macargo and Slugma are going, going, and yawn. The Torkoal doesn't even take half from Bubble Beam and attracts my fish. So I swap to Pikachu, who immediately falls to a Body Slam. Well that didn't work out so great, huh? Okay, time to be cheap here. This time, I swap to Pikachu on the Slugma, and will try to use a few double teams after a Thunder Wave. But it, uh didn't work out. The second time though starts off better, and after two doubled teams, Pika survives an overheat with two whole HP, knocking out the Slugma once the light screen wears off. Porkle only needs to miss a single time, which he does, and falls to a Thunderbolt. It would have been nice to be able to use Halo here instead of, you know, wasting a Pokespace with Trico, but I guess Ash still doesn't realize he's a grass type. With the fourth badge in hand, Ash heads to Fiery Path. Not to play, but to get himself a Torkoal. After all, Flannery's was pretty strong. On the way to Petalburg, Ash hears that Watson has supercharged his Manectric and wants a rematch. 
so out comes my Torkoal to immediately fall in a thunder. Ash does lose this fight in the anime, but it was a heck of a lot closer. Oh well, maybe this Fire Turtle isn't as good as I thought. At least after that battle, Trico, who is clearly not a water type, defeats an Exploud and evolves into Grovile at level 30. In Petalburg, it would appear that love is in the air, because we find Norman unabashedly flirting with Nurse Joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Norman, are you sure? Of course. You know I trust you 100%. Excuse me. <sighs> Brock is one thing, but you're a married man. Ash decides to defend his friend's honor by beating up their dad. The badge is just a perk. A Miracle Seed Overgrow Boosted Leaf Blade takes out Norman Slackoff, as well as the Vigoroth. But slacking is too strong, so Torkoal comes out to take the facade, and since he learned Protect like four levels ago, this battle is in the back. After one round of Flamethrower and Protect, Torkoal gets a crit, earning me the fifth badge. I love how quickly you can get from Flannery to Norman in a typical run, but it somehow took Ash 14 episodes. Here, I decide to defeat this reporter again so that Taylor can evolve, which is just Swellow. This is supposed to happen in a ring competition, but this is good enough. I disgustingly defeat Team Aqua in the Weather Institute, and am unfairly forced to take this very non-Ash Weather Pokemon. But he does give me a Mystic Water. Mei challenges me to another battle, but just to show her how bad she is, I plan to win with only Swellow, who isn't even poisoned. Pelipper stalls for a bit with Protect, and tries to confuse Swallow, but to no avail. Fire Chicken falls in one wing attack, as does the Lombre, after stalling with a fake out. Since the Winona Gym battle is sky high, it just makes sense to use Swallow again, though this time he is poisoned to activate Guts. Altaria immediately falls, and once again Pelipper is a loser, but he falls in a single wing attack once it actually connects. Winona's ace is a shiny Swallow, which is pretty cool, actually. But, my bird still outspeeds, and since Swellows have pretty crappy defense, that's all there is to it. My bird is so much better than hers, shiny or not. Oh, yeah. It's around this time that Pikachu turns evil and joins Team Rocket. Team Rocket blasts off at the speed of light! Surrender now or prepare for a fight! Me out. That's right! This whole episode is basically a soap opera plot, because Pika gets amnesia and fails to remember who the good guys are. To celebrate his return to lucidity, as soon as we get to Lily Cove, I try to make a polka block using stock and berries. It's been a while since I tried this, so I am a bit rusty. I force Pikachu to eat this abomination, and now that he is a master of coolness, let's try out the very first Pokemon contest, shall we? Things are off to a rough start, as Pika only gets two hearts in the swimsuit competition but he does manage to do decently well in the talent portion, meaning that he actually wins this cool contest by a tiny sliver, beating out Poochie. That was a close one. The last May fight basically goes the same way as the previous one. Just as I'm gaining ground on Team Aqua at Mount Pyre, they steal the orb and disappear. All right, let's defeat Team Magma instead. I decide to start with Corefish against Maxi, simply because he resists being intimidated. Mightyena tries to confuse him, but only gives a free attack boost. The Crobat does confuse him before falling, and then Corfish gets himself killed against the camera. Two confusions in a row? That's not fair. The second time round, Corfish protects against the Confused Ray and barely survives a wing attack. But then one Surf drowns the Camel, and Maxi learns the error of his ways. He'll never be a bad guy again. Archie narrowly avoids the same fate, not just once, but twice in quick succession. It's fine. I'm sure he's not up to anything world ending, so let's take a break and head to Moss Deep. For this battle, I get to use Pikachu and Swellow, who are apparently under leveled. But that's fine, I have a great strategy. Since this Soul Rock is super solid, Swellow starts with a Steel Wing, that misses, as Pikachu tries and fails to give Swellow a Thunder Boost. Look, I'm not an idiot. It worked out in the anime, okay? It's not my fault. Time to do this fight for real. Swellow Steel Wings the Lunatone and Pikachu misses with his tail. But that's okay, because one more wing attack and my bird has done it. Without golden plot armor, I might add. Archie tries to do some plot stuff, but Pikachu takes out his whole team with thunderbolts. And then said plot stuff happens, because that's how these things go. After witnessing this legendary scuffle, I bring Rayquaza in to break up the fight. 
In Shoal Cave, I let it snow and catch the very last Pokemon of the run, a Snowbrunt. I was tempted to use a Master Ball here, but old habits die hard. What if I find a Shiny somewhere? I have a full team of six for, you know, five seconds before it's on to the last gym leader, Juan. This is a double battle where my Pikachu and Grovile make remarkably short work of his Sea King and Walrein. But eight gym fights ain't enough because Juan immediately challenges me once again. This time it's a single battle. Since he starts with Whiskash, Grovile was in front and just takes him out. I'm hoping that he can survive an Ice Beam here, and he does, taking out Melotic as well. Last is Love Disc, so I swap to Pikachu to Thunderbolt that Love Fish. Having beaten him twice in a row, Juan has no choice but to offer me the Rain Badge. Now you might think with eight badges, I'm ready for the Elite Four, but oh no. There is a three month gap before the Hoenn League starts, so we head to Pacificlog because there's a contest here. But it doesn't really look like it, this place has nothing. Several episodes later, after Snowrunt evolves, which is pretty cool, we are saved by the Beldum as the League finally begins. Just like in the previous videos, I'm not going to change the Pokemon the Elite Four have, instead I'll just try to beat them using Ash's current team. And that will count as my Hoenn League Championship. But first, let's pretend that Wally exists just for a second so that Glalie can come in and wreck his whole career. Okay, I guess Torkoal can help out too. He hasn't done much this run. But Glalie was the MVP, taking out three Pokemon without ever being hit, even after swapping around. No wonder the animators forgot about this kid. Now we are on to the Elite Four, like a Meowth to Flame, or something like that. Starting with Sydney, I lead with Corphish, who does not get intimidated, and takes out Mightyena with a Brick Brick, after getting sand attacked and almost dying, that is. Well, time to change some plans. I swap to Torkoal in the Cacturn, who flamethrowers the Cactus after a Leech Seed. Now the Absol uses Swords Dance, but never gets a chance to hit my turtle thanks to an Overheat. Groval comes out to take the Crawdont Surf and one-shots with a Leaf Blade. He then screeches the Shift Tree, who starts double teaming. That's not good. A pre-poison swallow comes out, but he doesn't actually have Aerial Ace. Still, a facade handily takes out the tree, and I defeat Sydney rather easily. Phoebe may be a bit more difficult. Glalie uses Hail on turn one, as the Dusclops wastes a protect. That was nice. An Ice Beam freezes the ghost, also nice, and Phoebe doesn't heal him next turn like I assumed she would, so it dies. This brings out the stronger Dusclops, so now it's my turn to protect to give him some hail damage. After narrowly avoiding death to a rock slide, Crunch takes out the Dusclops. I obviously need to change Pokemon here, so out comes Swallow to avoid a Shadow Ball, and one shot with a fly, losing all of the PP in the process. Well, I suppose it's time to swap again because Swallow can't hit anybody. Pikachu comes out on a Thunderbolt and responds in kind. Last is Sableye, who also falls to a bolt. I'm not convinced this next strategy is going to work, but let's give Corphish a shot at redemption with the Ice Lady. Celio falls to a Brick Brick, as does her Glalie, who set up a pointless light screen. What was she thinking? The second Celio outspeeds to use Hail, but still gets broken like a brick. Corphish is doing great. Why did I ever doubt him? Oh, well, that could be why. Stupid explosion. I didn't want to be cheap, but I guess Glacia deserves to know the power of a silk scarf wearing, guts boosted, facading swallow. She never stood a chance against this bird. Glalie similarly destroys Drake and his mighty dragons, once he can actually hit them. Stupid Shellgon. Now, the rest of his team is quad weak to ice, with the exception of Kingdra, but all he does is blow smoke and falls easily enough. Wallace is going to be a bit more difficult. Not the Waylord, Pika destroys him with a single Thunderbolt. This baits out an Earthquake in Gyarados, so I pivot to Swallow to facade him. I could do another Swallow sweep here, but to avoid doing the same thing too many times in a row, I bring out Glalie on the Tentacruel to one-shot with an Earthquake, and heal with a Shell Bell. The Ludicolo survives two Ice Beams, even after being frozen, and almost takes out my Ice Demon with some Surfs. So on a heal, I say screw it, and bring Swallow back out to Facade because he still has no Fly PP. Let's try this one more time. I bring out Corphish on the Melotic's Ice Beam, 
baiting a toxic. This lets Pikachu come out to Thunderbolt, which brings out Whiskash at the end of the fray. Grovile barely survives the earthquake on the swap in, but does hang on and defeats Wallace with one last Leaf Blade. So in this alternate reality, Ash is now the champion of Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn. He's doing pretty good. And by that, I obviously mean I'm doing pretty good. After all, Ash ends up losing to a Fancy Pants Meowth who knows Thunderbolt. Though he does finish in the top eight, so it could have been worse. Pikachu is unable to battle! Meowth's the winner! The victory goes to Tyson! Before ending this video though, I can't go this far in Emerald without battling Steven. It would be unheard of. So that's where we head to next. To begin with, Pika starts off thunderbolting both the Skarmory and the Aggron because Sturdy sucks in Gen 3. This baits out an Earthquaking Metagross or a Meteor Mash? That was a bad call. Hoping for a Psychic here, I swap to Glalie who gets hit by a Meteor Mash and dies. Well, I read that Metagross very poorly. For the next attempt, Pikachu goes for a dig to see how little it actually does and promptly falls to an Earthquake after Shadow Ball misses. Next, I try another Swallow Swap, but he is pounded by a Meteor Mash. I have no idea what this Metagross is thinking. His moves are completely unpredictable. So that's obviously not going to work. Let's try something else. Pikachu paralyzes the Metagross before pivoting to Swallow and finally to Torkoal who takes a Meteor Mash. Even though this turtle is slow as dirt, the paralyzed Metagross is slower, so he falls to an overheat. Nice. For Claydol, Swallow makes a return on an Earthquake to one shot with a facade, but he can't defeat the Cradley, so Corphish takes an Ancient Power, trying to bait out a Giga Drain, but that failed miserably, and Glalie dies to another Ancient Power. I thought I had it that time too. After failing to get lucky with a fully paralyzed Metagross a few times, I decide to completely change things around. It's time to get serious and leave with my strongest Pokemon, Corphish. After a Swords Dance, the Skarmory falls to a lucky Critical Brick Break as my fish is toxic. Agron falls in one hit too, as does the Cradley. The Claydol outspeeds to hit with an Earthquake, and after the Poison Damage, Corphish falls. But he made it remarkably far. On the next attempt, I have a Petcha Berry to heal the poison, and the Skarmory does hit an Aerial Ace before falling. Several Brick Breaks and dead Pokemon later, I pivot to Swallow on the Claydol's Earthquake, responding with a Facade. Armaldo falls to a Steel Wing, and I realize I don't know what to do for the Metagross. I swap to Torkoal on a Meteor Mash, but I doubt he'll survive an Earthquake, and he doesn't. I was so close too! Next time, I decide to see just how much a Silk Scarf boosted facade does on the Metagross, and I was pleasantly surprised that it almost killed him. All I need is a tiny bit of power, which I think I can manage. Unless, of course, I miss the Steel Wing on the Armaldo and he Ancient Powers. The next several attempts are just filled with false starts, even falling to an unlucky crit. This was quite frustrating, actually. When it eventually does work how it's supposed to, Swellow mistakenly uses Steel Wing on the Clay Doll, but I'm thankfully not punished for it. And he gets a defense boost too. This means that he takes a bit more damage from Poison, but does level up to get more firepower. Armaldo falls as he's supposed to, and it's time to unveil my secret weapon, Hyper Beam, which is just 10 points stronger than the double power facade. With that, and the level up, let's see if Swellow is strong enough to one-shot Metagross. And he is! with a crit. Well, I'll take it. Frankly, that was horrible. Quite possibly the worst battle I've had in this series so far. I cannot believe how long it took, especially compared to how simple the Elite Four was. And that's it. That is the run. Becoming the champion wasn't as difficult as it could have been, but beating Steven? Now that was rough. I'm afraid that we do have to leave this video on a Cleffa hanger because I'm not sure if I'm going to go straight into Sinnoh or try some variant of the Battle Frontier. Let me know in the comment section what you think I should do, and if you have any ideas for the Battle Frontier, let me know that too. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next region.